Ooh, the small branches of the brachial plexus, as if the brachial plexus wasn't hard enough already. By the brachial plexus, we're talking about the network of nerves that are gonna supply or form the nerves of the upper limb. Um, so you should already be aware of the general structure of the brachial plexus and the major nerves, uh, muscular cutaneous, radial, ulna, median, maybe axillary nerves. And we're gonna talk about the little branches. So what's happening here is that if the brachial plexus is forming the nerves of the upper limb, well, some of the muscles of the upper limb are up here. This and this, the, the clavicle and the scapula, are bones of the upper limb. And there are a number of muscles running from the rib cage to the upper limb. So there are a number of small branches of the brachial plexus that are important because they supply significant muscles that control and move the upper limb. So that's our focus. You're still here. Okay, well done. Uh, <laughs> there's more difficulty. The other difficulty is that um, we have layers of muscles and these nerves tend to be running deep to those muscles. So I've got lots of lovely plastic models that don't tend to show these nerves. And even when I'm dissecting, well, you, you have to dissect so deeply to find the nerves that you end up moving the muscles that the nerves go to. So you kind of lose, you lose all of what you were looking for a little bit. The focus here is, if we look at the brachial plexus and we know where our small nerve comes from, and then if we know the muscle that that small nerve innervates, and you can remember those two facts, well, nerves tend to take a fairly direct route. So now you can remember the path that the nerve takes. Do you see what I mean? I do this with nerves all the time. And when we're looking at cadavers with students, that's what I tell students to do. Where does it come from? Where does it go to? Now you can work out what it is. So that's gonna be our focus. I will be doing a fair bit of description because as I say, these nerves aren't on models, but I've got some uh, pipe cleaners. So let's see how we go. I normally teach this every year on a postgraduate course to anaesthetists that are learning uh, ultrasound guided anaesthetics. We're going to start proximally and we're going to work our way out distally. So the first nerve then is going to be uh, the long thoracic nerve. So here are the roots of the brachial plexus in here. So the roots before we get to the trunks and from the roots C5, C6 and C7 the long thoracic nerve then is running, it's posterior to these other bits of the brachial plexus. So it's gonna drop down posteriorly, but then it has to come out through here to get to serratus anterior. That's where it's going to. We can see that on the other model. So look, on this muscular model, we're on the other side. So we're looking at the left side, whereas uh, this model was the right side. So let's work that out again. Um, and again, this is just a pipe cleaner, it's not very accurate, but these are the scalene muscles. So the brachial plexus is, the roots of the brachial plexus are in there. They're deep to these muscles and the brachial plexus is popping out from between the anterior and middle scalene muscles with the subclavian artery here. Um, but the long thoracic nerve then is, it's got to drop out because it's got to get down here to, innovate this big muscle here. This is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is running back to the scapula. So it protracts the scapula and rotates the scapula um, by pulling on this edge here. So that's the long thoracic nerve. Comes from the roots of the brachial plexus, goes to serratus anterior. Then we get to the dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal, okay. So that's gonna run to the back, scapula, oh yeah, that's where the scapula is. Now the dorsal scapular nerve, again, is a really early branch. It's from a root, so before we've got to the trunks, it comes from the C5 root, and then it's gonna run over here. Now, back here, we've got the rhomboid muscles, rhomboid minor and rhomboid major, between the scapula and the vertebrae. So that's where it's going, and it's gonna run deep to uh, rhomboid major, and rhomboid minor back there. So the dorsal scapular nerve runs dorsally next to the scapula 
to innervate the rhomboid muscles and it may well innervate the levator scapulae muscle on the way. To look at that on the other side on our muscular model, there's the scapula, these are the rhomboid muscles here. So the dorsal scapular nerve, or oh, there's levator scapulae there. The dorsal scapula nerve is going to be deep to these muscles because that's where the brachial plexus is. It's going to run deep to them and innervate these guys, the dorsal scapula nerve. Do you know about the subclavius muscle? Guess where the subclavius muscle is? It's a subclavicle. So the subclavius muscle is down here. And the nerve to subclavius is also an early branch of the brachial plexus. Now what we've got happening up here is the C5 and the C6 roots are coming together to form the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. And from around here, there will be this small nerve, the nerve to subclavius. And you can, you can imagine the course that, that that nerve is going to take, right? So the nerve to subclavius is going to run from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus, anteriorly and inferiorly, to get to the subclavius muscle inferior to the clavicle. From about the same location, which is why I say you need to find the nerve, see where it comes from and see where it goes to, from about the same location as the superior trunk is forming, the supra scapular nerve forms. Again from C5 and C6 roots, suprascapula. Okay, well, that's the scapula, that's the superior scapula. So the suprascapula nerve is gonna run from there, which means it's gonna run laterally and posteriorly. And in here, I could do with a naked one. Oh, there's one. Up here, there's a suprascapular notch, right? There's a notch there. That notch is where the suprascapular nerve is gonna run. So the suprascapular nerve, that's, that's your landmark, right? So you know it starts up here, it's gonna run across here. And the suprascapular nerve is gonna innervate the muscle up here. So this is the spine of the scapula. So the muscle we have here is supraspinatus. The muscle we have here is infraspinatus. So the suprascapular nerve is gonna run from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus, laterally and inferiorly, to the superior part of the scapula to innervate supraspinatus and infraspinatus, two of the rotator cuff muscles. I've also got an arm model here. So this is a right arm. Um, looking posteriorly, see there's the back of the hand. So looking posteriorly, this is the posterior shoulder region. So that's the scapula covered by there's the supraspinatus muscle. There's the infraspinatus muscle. Oh, there's the brachial plexus right there. So the suprascapular nerve is going to innervate supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles of the scapula. Next, I remember we're working our way distally. So next we need to work our way um, from the trunks, past the divisions, and out to the cords. So the cords of the brachial plexus are around the axillary arteries. They're named the lateral cord, the medial cord, and the posterior cord, based on their position relative to the axillary artery. And the, the lateral cord gives off a lateral pectoral nerve. The medial cord gives off a medial pectoral cord. I'm not gonna give you a price for working out where those go. Uh, here we can see pectoralis major. Deep to that is pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor is running from the ribs to the tip of the shoulder. Um, now actually the lateral pectoral nerve and the medial pectoral nerve usually then come together and then give off a number of branches and they're deep to these muscles because remember we're up in the axilla, deep to all this, right? So the, the lateral and medial pectoral nerves come together, give off a number of branches. I think they're a little bit variable and they will innovate uh, pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. Now the posterior cord, so there's the scapula, there's the axillary artery running through, so clearly the posterior cord you can't see from your perspective because it's posterior to the axilla, so it's really close to the scapula. And this is the deep scapular surface or the subscapular surface. And the muscle in there is called subscapularis, another one of the rotator cuff muscles. And from the posterior cord, 
we actually see two subscapular nerves, an upper subscapular nerve and a lower subscapular nerve. So they don't have far to go. Now, if we look at the, uh, the upper limb model again, they are represented on here. Do you see where we are? So there's the clavicle, there's the scapula. So that's the deep surface of the scapula that's up against the rib cage. That's the subscapularis muscle. This muscle down here is teres major. There's teres major there. Um, so there's the axillary artery and the cords. So posteriorly back here, the posterior cord is giving off these upper and lower subscapular nerves. So look, it is, it's right next to the subscapularis muscle. So the upper subscapular nerve is going to run to subscapularis muscle and innervate it. The lower subscapular nerve is going to run to the subscapularis muscle and to teres major and innervate both of those guys. Uh, but what we don't see on here is that there is a third nerve that arises in between the upper and lower subscapular nerves. So the other nerve that also arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus is the thoracodorsal nerve, uh, or, or thoracodorsal nerve. I don't know why it's... So thoracic, we say, but um, we don't say thoracodorsal although I probably have done in the past. My pronunciations are all, all over the place. Uh, but the other branch then is the thoracodorsal nerve. Now, as a climber, sure, I'm really interested in all the muscles of my shoulder, but the thoracodorsal nerve is gonna run to the climber's muscle. It's gonna run to latissimus dorsi. So imagine it's also running from the posterior cord, so it's already back here. That means then, There it is, that huge, great, big latissimus dorsi muscle, which is running from the back around to the humerus. So the, um, again, this is why it's so difficult to show, but the, the, the thoracodorsal nerve is, it's gonna be in the axilla, it's gonna be running in here, right? But it'll be running, we saw the long thoracic nerve running in the mid axillary line towards um, serratus anterior, the thoracodorsal nerve is going to run similarly, but more posteriorly, because it's got to get back to latissimus dorsi. So the thoracodorsal nerve is a branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, and it runs to latissimus dorsi, which is the muscle that gives us the power to do pull-ups, to lift our body weight, right? And that is almost it, which I don't know if you feel the same, but I always think it's going to be worse than it is, but it's not actually that bad. Now, there are a couple of sensory branches as well which are worth considering. So from that, where is it up there? That medial cord, oh, that medial cord of the brachial plexus, um, we get a couple of cutaneous nerves. Um, this is the arm, the brachium to the elbow. This is the forearm from the elbow to the wrist. So there is a medial cutaneous nerve of the arm that is gonna innervate skin medially as far as the elbow, and then there is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, which is going to innervate skin uh, between the elbow and the wrist, generally speaking. So you can imagine how these are going to run from that medial cord, the brachial plexus, and then they're, they're going to run down Whoa. the medial arm and the medial forearm. So particularly the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, it runs with the ulnar nerve, so, so don't mix it up. The ulnar nerve is, it, it's bigger. And again, you see where it goes, you see what it does. You, you, that's how you identify these nerves. So medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm are both branches from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. See what I, I, I Sure, it's hard to remember all of this stuff, but it's not super confusing. The naming is quite nice. So those are the small branches of the brachial plexus. We always talk about uh, the big branches, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, the musculocutaneous nerve, the radial nerve, the axillary nerve, because they are really big and important branches and they're, they're running down the upper limb to innervate these muscles of the upper limb. But the muscles of the shoulder region are part of the upper limb. They're there to move the scapula and move the humerus. Um, and they're also receiving branches of the brachial plexus. 
Um, but there's a bit more detail, They're a little bit harder to remember, aren't they? So we started proximally with the long thoracic nerve to serratus anterior, and then we saw the dorsal scapula nerve running dorsally towards the scapula to innervate the rhomboids and the vater scapulae. And then we saw the suprascapular nerve that's gonna run out to the superior part of the scapula where we find supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Oh, and then we also saw the, uh, the nerve to subclavius, the muscle um, sub the clavicle. Uh, and then we said that the medial and lateral pectoral nerves come together to innervate the pectoralis muscles we saw the thoracodorsal nerve dropping down from the posterior cord to innervate uh, latissimus dorsi. And we saw the two subscapular nerves, the superior and inferior subscapular nerves running to the subscapular muscle and teres major. And then the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Some people proximally even include the, uh, the first intercostal nerve as a branch of the brachial plexus just because it comes from the T1 spinal nerve root, but I think that's, I, mean, I, think, I think we've got enough to remember. I think that's pushing it a little bit. But um, the small nerves of the brachial plexus, I hope that's rounded it out and has been kind of useful. Obviously, if those nerves get injured, then those muscles that are innervated by those nerves will become paralyzed or weak. Um, if it's a muscle that's holding the, the scapula to the rib cage, then we might see winging of the scapula with some movements. If it's a rotator cuff muscle, then there will be weakness on rotation of the humor and stability of the hum stabilization of the humerus uh, within the glenohumeral joint. Um, and straight, yeah, you get it. Okay. If I haven't really put you off, I'll uh, see you next week.